Okay, so I'll be talking a little bit about trying to figure out where your probes were in CCF space. So yesterday I talked about planning those trajectories where you'd want to try to go in with your probe. And today I'll be talking about how to figure out where you actually were with your probe. Um, so I'll talk about that. And then I think Steve after me is going to talk about doing that in 3D as opposed to just the slice histology. Um, so I'll say that the stuff I'm going to show today, I would still consider a work in progress. It's something that um, I'm trying to upkeep regularly on GitHub. So if you have any issues or you want to work with it further, uh, feel free to post issues to GitHub or email me or post the Slack in the next couple of days. Okay, so the goal of what I'm going to be talking about is to start with traditional slice histology, which looks like this slide on the left here, and then try to do a few different steps with it. The first is to figure out where your slice was in the Allen CCF Atlas. So I should say that everything I'm going to be talking about today is just with regards to mice, and it's just using the Allen CCF Atlas. So uh, the first thing you'd want to do is figure out where your slice is in CCF space. And what this does is it gives you a set of coordinates in all three dimensions where your slice lies within this 3D atlas. Once you have that coordinate, then you want to be able to transform your slice into this space. So you're going to have slight deformations and slight size differences. So you want to find some transformation to go from your slice to the Allen CCF atlas. And then the final thing is to use these two previous things to uh, look at things that you are interested in. So for example, if you want to see where your probes were, you can look for dye tracts. If you want to see where labeled cells were, you can look for those kinds of things. Um, so uh, the idea for this is to get a general transformation from your slice into CCS space, which is then versatile enough to do essentially whatever you'd want to be able to do with it. Uh, there are a number of tools for doing these kinds of things these days. I don't know if any of them are in the super finished process, but I'll throw up some links here that you can look at. Um, the first one is from the Allen Institute itself. It's a page that they have on the community where they compile all of these different code bases to work with their atlases. Um, and then there's another page here, which again was trying to compile these atlas uh, alignment type things. So mine is definitely not the only one and definitely not the best one out there. So I would, if I were starting new, you know, have a, have a look at these pages and have a Google around and see what other kinds of things are available. All right, so I'm going to take you through an example of this processing then on my computer. So I'm going to pull up my screen here. All right, so uh, if you, don't have this fancy new 3D stuff that Steve's going to talk about and all you've got is this old fashioned 2D slice histology, then the data you'll have will look something like this. You'll have a couple of TIFF files probably in a folder and each one of these files will look something like this. It'll be a slide and you'll have a bunch of different brain slices and you'll have a few different colors. So the slices I'm showing you today have blue in DAPI and green in GCAMP, and then the red is the probe tract. So the probe tract is being labeled here with dye I. I believe it's been talked about a little bit earlier in the course, but all I do is I lightly dip the probes into this dye I a few times and let it air dry. And then once you put it to the brain, you get this really nice bright signal. So uh, we want to be able to take these and first of all, figure out where all of these slices are with respect to the atlas, and then be able to plot this probe trajectory in the Atlas database. All right, so the code um, is in this repository, which I have online. So I will link that in the Slack, I think maybe somewhere, um, but it's, uh, it's here. So it's github.com slash Peters AJ, that's my name, and then AP histology. So if you download this repository, then you'll be able to do all the things I'm showing you today. There are hopefully extensive directions. So everything I'm saying today in video form is available here in written form. Again, if you have any questions and you want to actually use this in the future, then you can always pull um, a new issue up and then I can, I can help you out with things in the future. All right, so let me run you through the basic functions that I've got in this package. 
go up here. All right, so any chance that you could compile it so that people who don't have MATLAB or don't want to use MATLAB can still use it? Unfortunately, no, this one's not doable for that. Um, if you're more comfortable with Python, there are some great Python packages available, which I haven't explored because I am not that familiar with Python. So this is Python versus MATLAB camp at the moment. Um, okay. Yep, yeah, so you need MATLAB to work with this, unfortunately. All right, so all of the scripts are contained in this in this demo histology in this demo histology pipeline thing. I'll move over to a, a personal one for now. But uh, when you go to use this, for example, at the top of the page, it should tell you um, all the functions are listed in this demo histology pipeline. So if you're a new user, you pull that out and then you see what all the things do. All right, so I'll take you through all of these functions one by one to give you an idea of how they work. So the first thing you're gonna do is load the CCF Atlas in, and then you're gonna tell it where your slices are. So these are two things which I believe I've already done. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is pre-processing the slides. So what we wanna do here is fix the color balance and we wanna load each slice in as its own image. So that way we can work with the slices individually. So there's a resize factor here where for example, you have really big images and you wanna make them small, you can change that here. I've already downsampled these to make this quicker. Um, you can set whether your images are already slices or not. In this case, uh, they're, they're slides. All right, and then we're going to run this process histology. So this is going to load them in and let you first set the contrast um, and then pick which slices you want to save. All right, so it's going to try to figure out the contrast automatically. Sometimes it gets it horribly wrong, like you can see here. So it gives you this dialog box, is the contrast okay? Yes, or do you want to set it manually? In this case, we can hit manual. Uh, then we're prompted with this box here to change the contrast. So I'll do all these steps kind of quick and dirty, but obviously if you were doing this for real, you would, you would take your time and make it look nice. All right, so I'll change that contrast a little bit. Then it's going to ask you what the color of this slice should be. So I know it's blue. There are ways to do this automatically depending on what file format you use, but um, that can kind of run the gamut. All right, so this is the green slice now. Uh, the contrast looks okay here. So I'll just say, yes, that should be green. Uh, and then this is for my probe. This contrast I think could use a little bit of work. So I'm just going to give it some more upper range there and some lower range and then quit and this should be red. All right, so the steps that I've just done have turned all of those contrast ranges into something that look nice and clean. So when it puts all those three colors together, you should have some images that are clearly distinguishable. All right, so now I was going to show you all of the slides, all the slices which are on a slide, and it's your job to pick which ones you want to pull out. So for example, if all I cared about here was the slices with the probe track, then that's what I'd pull out. Um, all right, you can select the slices that you want to extract by clicking on them. It's going to attempt to figure out where they are. If it does a bad job at figuring out where they are, you can right click and draw your own arrow. In this case, it's done a pretty good job. So I'll just pick this first slice here as an example. And then I'll just pick this one here uh, and maybe this one here. All right, so uh, once you've picked all the slices you want on one slide, then you can hit spacebar, moves to the next slide. So here I've got a slice here with a bit of probe on it uh, and I'll just leave the rest for now. All right, so I've just clicked on a few slices that I want to extract. So what the program's gonna do is take all of these slices and save them as individual images. So I'll hit spacebar again. Once it's through all the slices, then it finishes its process. So now it's created this new folder here called slices. And these are small color fixed images with each slice being its own image. All right. So we're just gonna do a little bit of processing to those where we're going to rotate them so that they're the right orientation. We're gonna center them and we're gonna pad them so that they're all the same size. So I'm gonna run that. Um, the way that I rotate, whoops, the way that I rotate these to be all in the same orientation is by drawing a reference line down the center. So in my case, I'm using coronal slices. So I'm going to draw a reference line like this. And now, it's going to try to align this line to each one of my slices. So if you're using a different orientation, for example, you could just pick a different reference line if you have something else that you can work with. So I'm gonna draw this midline here on each one of these slices. 
and that's going to rotate them all so that they're in the same orientation. All right, so now it's going to pull out these images and I can switch back and forth here with these buttons. I should say that all of the directions should either pop up as a separate box or they should be shown up here. So it should be clear somewhere in bold font what all of the keyboard commands are. So here we can flip between all of these slices and we should see that they're roughly um, aligned top to bottom here. Um, you can do some things here like flip the slices. So if your slice is backwards, you can flip them left and right or up and down. So I think in this case, my slice actually was in this orientation. So I'm gonna flip that there. Um, so this is just to make sure the orientation is all good. And once that's good, I hit escape to save and quit. All right, so now I've got still these slice images, except they've been slightly altered so that they're all in the correct orientation and they all should be aligned vertically relative to each other. All right, so our finished pre-processor images now, the next thing we want to do is figure out which part of the CCF atlas each one of these slices corresponds to. So that is done with this next function here. All right, the way this function works is it shows your slice on the left here, and it shows this 3D atlas on the right. So this 3D atlas, you can move with the arrow keys. And as you can see, there's actually a cube here. So the top of the brain is here, the front is the brain is in the back, and then um, left and right. So the idea is to rotate this atlas to be in line with the axis of cutting on your slices. And then you can move with the mouse wheel forward and back in the slice to pick which piece of the CCF corresponds with your particular slice in histology. All right, so normally when I try to pick the atlas um, cutting orientation, I do that on kind of the most asymmetrical slice I can find. So usually the hippocampus is a pretty good is a pretty good marker of this because if it's bigger on one side than the other, then you can you can change um, the axis of cutting. So here I'm just going to move back to the hippocampus, and it looks like it's generally symmetrical. So I'm going to try to kind of give it symmetry on the left and right. All right, so at the moment, this is a totally manual step. I don't have a nicer way of trying to automatically figure out where in the atlas you are. I think some other people do. So again, it's probably worth taking a look online to see what other kind of packages are available. Um, but mine pretty much just relies on looking at it and, and figuring out whether it looks decent or not, which in my experience is, is not actually as hard as it sounds. Okay, so let's pretend that I'm happy with this angle now. The idea is to go through each one of these slices and then pick a slice in the CCF that that corresponds to. So I'll go to my first slice here, and then I'm just gonna move the mouse wheel until I'm at a place where, oh, my mouse wheel is quite slow on this computer. Uh, I'm gonna move it until it looks like it generally matches. So I'm gonna go by the, uh, by the fiber tracks up here. So let's say that this looks okay. Once I have a slice I think looks good, I'm gonna hit enter. And it's gonna say there's a new saved atlas position. Okay, so I'm just gonna run through and do that with all of my slices. So this is the second one. Then this is the third one. And this is the fourth one. So as I'm doing this, it's saving the location of how far in the CCF space each slice is. And it's going to record that and the positions of each spot in my slices. All right, so at this point, I've got all four of them down. So if I now scroll between them, it should show all of these different slices. All right, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna hit escape, which saves and quits. All right, so now you're almost done. You've pre-processed your images. You've decided which slice in the CCF atlas your histology slices correspond to. Now we want to align those to make a transformation between the two. So there's an auto align function here, which I think generally does kind of a decent job. So it's going to take the outline of your slice and the outline of the CCF slice and try to just match them up as best it can. So um, I think that as you can see here, it's doing a decent first pass job. Sometimes it's not going to do a perfect job. So there's a manual step if you want, where you can, whoops, uh, go through, 
each slice and adjust how aligned it is. So in this case, for example, let's say you can see that these fiber tracks aren't exactly aligned. So maybe I want to do this manually. This is done by control points. So you put a bunch of control points on that side, and then you can put a bunch of control points on this side that match up. And then it's going to attempt to fit it a little bit better. All right, so if that's something that you want to do, then you can go through each slice and fix it up. The rest of these you know, generally look pretty clean. So I'm going to save it and quit. All right, so now you're finished all of your processing. You've taken your slides, you've pre-processed them. Now you have individual slice images. You have where in the CCF those slices correspond to, and you have the transformation from the CCF to your histology images. So now you can do stuff with them. There's a few examples of that down here. So for example, you can just view it. This is one of the reasons I kind of wanted to make this, where um, you can just hover over an area and it tells you where your slice is, all right? Um, you can also do things like get your probe histology. So um, it'll ask you how many probes you have, and then you can go through, whoops, uh, that was a mistake. It, uh, it'll ask you how many probes you have, and then you go through each slice and you just draw where your probes are. So in this case, I've got probe one here, and then I've got a little bit more probe one here, and then probe two lives in the back here. So when I save and quit that, it'll pull up the areas where the probes are, and it'll plot them in 3D space, and it'll save a um, file with the locations of these things so you can work with them in other spaces. Um, so I think that's my time up and it, it basically summarizes all of this stuff. So um, again, you know, some of this stuff is in essentially the beta phase. If you want to use it and you've got questions, feel free to post on the GitHub or the Slack or email and hopefully everything can be cleaned up for general use.